Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to another Total War Update blog. I like these drip feed style blogs because it at least keeps us informed, and I would rather have little drips of information fed to me than no information at all. So I will take these even though it could get a little bit annoying having just small things announced just a tiny, tiny fraction at a time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read through the blog, give my opinions on them, maybe do a little bit of speculation. Try not to do so much speculation, leaving that up to you guys, but rather give you guys the juicy information you might need to make your own speculations. And just for one more time, speculations. Today we're thrilled to announce a new class of historical Total War game on PC. Released under a new badge, Total War Saga games will be standalone spin-off titles focusing on exciting pivotal moments in history rather than whole historical eras. Uh, Mike Michael sat down with the game director of their first Total War Saga game, Jack Lustead, to find out what kind of Total War experience fans can expect from this team. What makes a game a Total War Saga? With our big releases that cover entire eras, like Rome or Empire, we've been following them up with standalone games that focus on a single character's life and the time around them, such as Napoleon or Attila. But there are also these key, pivotal moments in history which don't necessarily revolve around a single character, only lasted a few months or a few decades at most, that's crucial, that line right there in the next one. Such moments also tend to be constrained to a tight geographical era, area as well. So something that can last from a few months to a few decades, 20 to 30 years, but also was a very focused area um, that of not like Attila the whole map, but something like Age of Charlemagne, or this is actually sounding very similar to kind of the Kingdoms era expansions uh, that was in Medieval 2. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. These moments, are perfect fuel for Total War. They're a powder keg, where anything can happen in history could have gone in any direction. Sagas are epic stories, and we feel that name described these moments well and allows us to go into the kind of individual detail we love. So, Total War Saga games will be the same mix of turn-based campaign strategy, real-time battle tactics, and hundreds if not thousands of hours of gameplay as a regular Total War game, but focused on a distinct moment. Sagas won't be revolutionary new titles or introduce brand new eras. They'll follow ons from previous Total War games and inhabit the same time period or at very least relate to it. But these are certainly Total War games. We've got more games in production than ever had before and historical games form the majority of our forthcoming releases. We thought that badging these Total War Saga would help players understand that they are a spin-off and not the next major title. So, as it said, this is not the next major release, nor is it a DLC. Just like Napoleon and Attila, and also like The Fall of the Samurai, these are completely standalone titles, not requiring the base game to play, but relying on the older engines. Most likely this will be Attila. I don't know why they would use a Rome 2 engine, considering how dated it is, but we'll have to see. So something that's lasting a few months to a few decades is in a constrained geographical area, but had a major historical event where something could have gone in any certain direction. Leaves a lot up to the imagination, but the key here is also um, not focusing on a single character, which honestly, I'm going to say that Alexander the Great's campaign, no matter how amazing and epic it would be, is definitely out in terms of these Total War sagas because it focuses on Alexander. Alexander's fall, however, the uh, the Tom, uh, Ptolemaic Kingdom, uh, the Seleucids, the Macedonians, all of those generals breaking the empire up, however, I think really could fit that, fit that kind of error. So there's something I wanted to mention there. How is this different to previous Total War games? In terms of core gameplay, it's not. If you've enjoyed previous games, you'll certainly be interested in Total War Saga games. It's more about focus. There might be as many playable factions or conquerable territories in them, but that could all be focused down to one specific region or country and a particular point in time. In fact, we've done it before. The Fall of the Samurai is exactly the kind of thing we're talking about. It was a standalone spin-off focused on the pivotal event of the Boshin War, a concentrated Total War game which puts you right in the middle of a really dynamic moment of history where the outcome could have gone in a huge number of different directions. If you liked Follow the Samurai and the kind of gameplay we delivered with it, then you're going to enjoy what we've got planned for our first saga title. But it's important to say that this isn't our next major historical release, it's an iteration on a previous game built on something we've already released. 
And Michael goes to say in the recent blog, we told fans that two historical games are currently in development. What does your team's game sit within that? Jack responded, our team is the Flashpoint project mentioned in that blog, and our, go and our game will be out first. The other game is our next major historical game with its own larger dedicated team, and we will feature a new era we haven't visited yet. It's a huge title for CA, and we'll be talking about it much more in the future. It's going to be a busy time for historical fans. So in case you don't know, and in case that didn't kind of confuse you, um, there are two games currently in development. We thought there were three, but apparently there's only two. Um, so the main historical title, and at one point there was going to be some DLC, some actual DLC, not standalone, and then the Flashpoint team, which was going to create some standalone project. The Flashpoint team is the Total War Saga team. So no longer should it be labeled Flashpoint, it is the Total War Saga team. Now, something to mention, and this is in the live stream that I caught a little bit of, um, Jack was actually in development, helped develop several of the games, was the design lead for several of them, including the Fall of the Samurai. So it makes sense for him to be the design lead for this new Total War Saga, as it represents the standalone titles that we are looking for. Now, in this paragraph, we do see some things, and he also mentioned this in the live stream. Um, in terms of playable factions, he said pretty much everyone will fend for themselves. This is not necessarily you have two big main parties that are made up of different factions going at each other. No, this is several factions, much like the start of every single one of these titles, uh, where you have a lot of playable factions and conquerable territories, but they're all going at each other. He also mentioned that the map, which we may see, here we go. It's in the next paragraph, so I won't go into it. Let's get down to the next paragraph because I'm really excited about it. What is the scope of this Total War Saga game? and how big will it be? When we talk about games based around these moments in history that lasted months or years, we don't mean short Total War games. They'll have a narrower focus, but they will still be the epic sandbox players are familiar with. Again, the Fall of Samurai is a perfect example of this. The period covered in that game was compressed down to a few months, but a lot happened within those months. Future Total War Saga games may also cover time periods that... Um, Wait, that sounds a little weird. May also cover time periods that were short, where a lot happens, while others may cover conflicts spanning a couple of decades, but still focused on a single geographical era. That was a little bit of a weird mix-up in words on the blog, so sorry about that. To help show the kind of scale we're talking about, the game I'm currently working on has a map that is comparable in gameplay size to Total War Attila, but focused on a smaller geographical area, and the campaign will take just as long to complete as any other Total War title, focusing on a single geographical location, and this way allows us to go into greater detail within the period and the setting. This is really, really exciting because we have a territory map the size of Europe, North Africa and parts of the Middle East, but is on a much more focused map. So imagine, say, the age of Charlemagne, but instead of the limited amount of territories there, it is as big as the continent of Europe. A lot of geographical features can be focused on here. I'm super excited to see that because Warhammer really enhanced their kind of campaign map features, and I'm excited to see them kind of spill that over, hopefully, into this new map. So really, really huge news there, literally, because of the map size. Why is the focus on succinct but substantial moments in history important for you? They're what I like to call table flip moments in history, where events are in the balance that could go any number of interesting and unique ways. This makes them a perfect fit for Total War games, where we give players the freedom to depart from the actual historical events and explore what might have happened had things gone differently. When you think of the possibilities in and around those moments, some of these really classical and inspiring moments of history, there's vast potential. Civil wars? great conquest, rebellions and uprising, religious movements. As with the Total War traditionally, there's an almost endless list of possibilities of time periods and settings for to future Total War Saga games. And he hints as to the content and why did you make a game based at this particular point in history? We'll announce it properly in the next few months, but I can say that it's another spiritual follow-up for Total War Rome 2, much like Total War Attila, and moves the time period forward in much the same way. It's, being, it's great being able to build on and optimize the tech and the content from those games like we did on Attila with Age of Charlemagne, especially for a moment in history we've not spent enough time with as a studio. And eventually we'll get some more um, things going uh, 
when can you expect more information in the very near future i really like this last paragraph because it, it really goes into a lot of what could happen you have civil wars great conquests rebellions and uprisings religious movements so you are talking the 30 years war any kind of religious movement civil wars you could do the war of the roses i'm thinking they're bringing it into the medieval era i don't think we take it literally when it says it moves the time period forward in much the same way but it could be so you're talking potentially the norman conquest you have the viking invasion there's a lot of things we could do with it and there's just that clash so you have to think of significant points in history where if things had turned out differently, it really, really, really would have changed the way history was made. I'm going to let you guys speculate. I've got a lot of ideas in mind, but again, it's really up to you guys. I'm excited to see what you can come up with. So keep that in mind, though. It's just a spiritual follow-up to Total War Rome 2, much like Total War Attila. So think of things probably pre-medieval or leading right up to medieval, kind of that time period in which uh, significant things in history happened. But, I don't know. I'll just let you guys roll with it. So that's it, guys. I just kind of wanted to roll through the blog with you, really get those juices flowing. There's a lot of good tidbits here, and I'm excited for more information as they release different things in regards to the standalone title. You can be a dag, I'm sure I'm going to be on top of it as quickly as I can when new information comes out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Be sure to check out my Patreon, where for $1 a month you can help support the channel and getting access to some pretty cool stuff, as well as blogs and potential voting in the future. But guys, this is it. Thank you for watching, and I'm out of here. Peace.